Hi there. In this video, I'll be answering a question on the conservation of energy, calculating the gravitational potential energy of a car at the top of a slope in order to find its speed at the bottom of the slope. Here's a question from the 2008 Intermediate 2 paper. An early method of crash testing involved a car rolling down a slope and colliding with a wall. In one test, a car of mass 750 kilograms starts at the top of a 7.2 meter high slope. So basically, it starts off here accelerates down the slope, then crashes into the wall like so. Part A of the question asks us to calculate the gravitational potential energy of the car at the top of the slope. The equation to use here is this one, EP is equal to MGH, where M is the mass in kilograms, G is gravitational field strength, which is found in the data sheet at the start of the exam, and H is height. Now, back in the days of intermediate two physics, the value for G, that's gravitational field strength on Earth, given in the data sheets was 10 newtons per kilogram. Now, for National 5 physics, the value is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. So, substituting this, as well as the mass of the car, and its initial height into our equation, we get 750 times 9.8 times 7.2, which works out to be 52,920 joules. Written to two significant figures, that's 5.3 times 10 to the power of 4 joules. B part 1 then asks us to state the value of the kinetic energy of the car at the bottom of the slope, assuming no energy losses. Notice how we're being asked to state the value of the kinetic energy, rather than calculate it. The reason is that we already know the answer, so there's no further calculation required. Another thing to look for is how many marks are awarded for each part of the question. If this was a National 5 question, then part A would be awarded 3 marks, while B part 1 would only be awarded 1 mark. So, to cut a long story short, assuming no energy losses, the kinetic energy of the car at the bottom of the slope would also be 5.3 times 10 to the power of 4 joules. Be careful when answering this type of question. Don't always assume that all the potential energies transform to kinetic energy, although it is here. Here's the last part of the question. B part 2 asks us to calculate the speed of the car at the bottom of the slope before hitting the wall. So, now that we know the kinetic energy of the car at the bottom of the slope, we just substitute it into this equation. Ek is kinetic energy in joules, m is mass in kilograms, and v is speed in meters per second. That's what we're trying to find out. That gives us 5.3 times 10 to the power of 4 is equal to 0 0.5 times 750 times v squared. Dividing both sides by 0 0.5 times 750 will make v squared the subject of the equation like this which works out to be 141.3. So speed v must be the square root of 141.3, which is 11.8869 meters per second. The last step is to write this answer to the suitable number of significant figures. That gives us a final answer of 12 meters per second. Now, as far as conservation of energy questions go, this was a fairly straightforward one. All of the car's potential energy was transferred to kinetic energy, which, as I said earlier, won't always be the case. For that reason, I'll try to dig out more involved questions to answer in a future video. That's us for now, though. For more information on upcoming videos, summary sheets, and so on, visit physics-podcast.co.uk. Thank you for listening.